Welcome back to The Look and Sound of Leadership, an ongoing series of executive coaching tips designed to help you be perceived in the workplace the way you want to be perceived. I'm Tom Henschel, your executive coach, and today we're talking about the voice of authority. Sandra was worried about her authority. As an individual contributor, she had been a standout. Now she was going to lead a team, and she wanted to be a great team leader. She was grateful for the opportunity to discuss her worries with a coach, and authority was our topic of the day. I like these people, she said. We've all known each other a long time, so I don't know where I get my authority from. Well, that's an interesting question, Sandra. I said, where do you get your authority from? She considered, then gave an uncomfortable shrug. Because I'm the boss? Because I have the job and they don't? She squirmed, clearly uncomfortable. I laughed. <laughs> Spoken with authority. She laughed, too. Hardly. Well, if not authority, I said, at least reality. That is the reality, Sandra. You have the title and they don't. That may not give you authority with everyone, but it will with most. But what do I say when I think someone could be working harder, or I want more transparency, or if I think someone is using excuses? Reality only gets me so far. What's your concern, I asked. What do I say in a situation like that? What do you want to say? She slowed down, thinking as she spoke. I guess I want to say, you need to work harder, or you need to tell me when those things happen, or you need to be straight with me. And that would have authority, I asked. She seemed satisfied and a little surprised. Yeah, I guess it does. Can I ask you a question, I asked? Sure. You said, you need to be straight with me. What does need mean? They need to? Is that like a food and water kind of need? Well, no, not that kind of need, she said, but, you know, they need to. Because why? Oh, why? Gosh, here we go again. Because I'm the boss and I'm telling them what to do? She asked it as a question. So they need to do what you say, I asked back. Well, don't they? She was becoming unsure. I don't know. You say they need to, but suppose they don't do it. What then, I asked. Yeah, right, she threw up her hands. That's where my authority falls apart. I don't know what then. How do I get out of that corner? How would it be, I asked, if you took the word need out altogether? She reformulated in her head and said, You have to. No, that can't be right. That's the same as need, isn't it? I don't know. Can I suggest you turn it all around? Right now it's all pointing at them. I pointed a finger at an imaginary person. You have to do this, and you need to do that. Could you turn it around so that you need to be straight with me becomes about yourself? She shrugged. I need you to be straight with me? I smiled, not sure if she was joking. Try it without need, I reminded her. Right, sorry. Well, at least I got the part right about it being about me, she smiled. Well, actually, you didn't, I said. I pointed again. You need to be straight with me, and I need you to be straight with me. Those are pretty much the same thing, aren't they? The focus is still on the other person. She thought about that before finally conceding the point with a nod. Then, as if reciting rules, she said, So this has to be about me, and I can't use the word need. She looked away, then back, then said, How about this? I don't think you're being straight with me. Ooh, no. Ooh, talk about pointing a finger. Could I be more blaming? Hmm, let me try that again. She closed her eyes a second. Then they popped open. She said, I want. That has to be the answer. I smiled that she thought there was an answer. Very slowly, listening to herself, she said, I want you to be straight with me. That doesn't use the word need, and it certainly is all about me. I want you to be this or that or the other. Straight, simple, boom. You like it, I observed. I do. It sounds a little weird, but yeah, I like it, she said. A little weird, I asked. She looked right at me. Selfish, she said. It sounds selfish. Does it? How? Because it really is all about me. I want this and I want that. Is that going to get me authority by demanding what I want? 
Who said anything about demanding, Sandra? I asked. She only stopped a second before saying, But isn't saying I want you to be straight with me demanding by its very nature? I think so. I think the demand is in the delivery, I said. If I came to you in the spirit of conversation, and I said I'd like to talk about how we're communicating, and with no accusation, but with interest and curiosity, I said, I want you to be straight with me, and I want to tell you why being straight is on my mind. Would that sound demanding to you? Oh, I guess not. But it's hard to ask for what you want like that. <laughs> Amen, I said. She shook her head with a fond smile. This is just like me and my sister. We fight for control. When we're saying, you have to do this for mom, and you need to call the insurance company, it's always a fight. But when either one of us can just say, I really want you to make that call, it's so much easier. I don't know why it's so hard to ask for what you want. I think you hit it when you said that thing about being selfish. Asking for what you want sounds selfish to a lot of people. You don't think this is just a girl thing, she asked? I think women worry about it out loud more than men, but I don't think men are any better at talking this way. And what is this way, she asked. Asking for what you want, simply, directly, without a battle. Asking for what you want is one way we gain authority. And no, I don't experience men as inherently better at it than women. Wait, wait, wait. That's one way to gain authority? What's another, she asked. I took a breath framing it up. I think there's mindset and there's construction. In other words, there's how you think about authority and how you communicate your authority. Okay, start me with mindset, she said. Okay, there's one mindset that thinks authority just is. You have to do what I say just because. She smiled a little sheepishly, saying, that would be me saying you need to do such and such, or I need you to be transparent with me, right? Right, I agreed, smiling back. Let me guess, this is not the right mindset? Well, whether it's right or not, Sandra, plenty of people have it. <laughs> like me, she laughed. And then she said, I'm sorry to be slow on the uptake, but that's a bad mindset because why? Because it's not reality, Sandra. People don't have to do what you say just because you're the boss. There are a million ways to not comply. So thinking that what you say goes does not get you authority. Well, then, what would be a good mindset, she asked. Accepting that people do things for their own reasons. So all I can do is ask. Here's what I want. I hope you do it. Or what, she asked seriously. Well, I may not know at the moment, but when the time comes, I'll have choices. You have choices, and so do I. And that's not an arms race against an enemy. It's just true. We're both grown-ups, and we both make choices. I won't take yours personally. I hope you won't take mine personally. <laughs> Yikes, she laughed, fanning her face with her hand. No wonder I have trouble with authority. I can barely do that with my kid. Okay, okay, so don't take it personally is the mindset, right? That and that we all get to make our own choices, I said. Okay. And then what's the construction? It builds on the I want idea that you had before. It's a clear, unambiguous statement about your thinking. For example, she asked. I rattled off three. Hard work is a big value of mine. Or I want to hear about those sorts of things when they happen. Or I want you to be straight with me. She said, are these the dreaded I statements I've always heard so much about but never seen in the wild? I laughed. <laughs> sure, yes, you could call them I statements. Say them again, she said. I ticked them on my fingers. Hard work is a big value of mine. I want to hear about those sorts of things when they happen. I want you to be straight with me. Hey, wait a second. That first one didn't even have the word I in it, she protested. Well, it doesn't have to. It's still an I statement. An I statement is constructed from your thinking. Sometimes it's a want, sometimes it's an idea, sometimes it's a vision, but it's yours, and you're not ambiguous about it. No waffling, she said. I nodded yes, and she asked, and waffling sounds like qualifying, which sounds like... I laughed a little, and then, making a I'm sorry to mention this face, launched into my rendition of qualifying speech. 
you know, there's something I've kind of been thinking about a little. It's not a big deal, but, you know, there's something I want to ask. And we can talk about it if you like. I, I really want to hear your ideas about it. And I stopped, dropping the act. Golly, Sandra, I hear people qualify for paragraphs before they get to their I statement, by which time it doesn't matter. Well, she said, I don't think that's my issue. I agree, Sandra. I don't think qualifying speech is your issue. Now it was her turn to tick on her fingers. So the construction part of authority, how I sound, is I statements and asking for what I want. Simple, direct. And the mindset, how I think about authority, is that I don't really have any authority at all. All I have is choices, and my choices are going to depend on what you do. Wow, Sandra, I said, that was way better than I could have said it. She cocked her head and smiled, saying, well, maybe not all the time, but some of the time I can do the look and sound of leadership. Authority. <laughs> it is a slip-sliding sort of thing, isn't it? I mean, sometimes it's firing on all cylinders, and then sometimes it stalls. In my professional life, I've felt my authority shift depending on every possible factor. Who's in the room, or where that room is, what company I'm in, what country I'm in, what the decor is. I have felt my authority inflate or deflate because of my sleep the night before or my self-talk leading up to the meeting. Why do I know all that? Because I've been watching myself in relationship to authority for a long time. When I was an actor, I often felt I didn't have any authority and I didn't like it. So I was watching myself in relationship to authority. Now the truth is, even working actors like I was don't have much authority, so I didn't expect much. But looking back now... I think there was more there than I took. I think I was self-limiting in my relationship to authority. And I think that is a pretty easy thing for all of us to do. But then I became a coach, and I really watched my relationship to authority because now I needed authority. I mean, who's going to talk to a coach who doesn't have authority, right? But think about a coach's authority. Where does it come from? It's never going to be hierarchical, right? As a coach, I can only have as much authority as I can earn personally. So watching myself in relationship to authority became critical to my success. So what does authority look like to me now? <laughs> well, when I look back at my first decade of coaching, I think in those days I earned my authority from telling. And I think a lot of young professionals get their authority from telling. And not just young professionals. I'm going to tell you what to do. It sounds authoritative, right? And look, the truth is, it is authoritative. But now, in my third decade of coaching, I find that I'm gaining my authority from not knowing. Rather than telling, I'm asking. A lot. All the time. So let's say you're in a situation, well, I don't know the answer. Let's think about that together. I just have questions to ask. When I don't know the answer to your question or when I don't have a reaction to your story, when I'm just there to listen and be curious, it gives you permission to say what's on your mind. And over time, you're probably going to grant me the same permission. Getting permission from you to say what's on my mind, having you being willing to listen to me, that is pretty great authority, don't you think? Wouldn't it be good if the people around you were willing to listen to what you had to say, I think that would be great. So what is this going to sound like for you in the workplace? Suppose you feel an issue of authority coming up. I say, start with interest and curiosity. Don't know the answer. So you would say, hey, this isn't the way I expected it, things to go. What happened? Curious, conversation, open. And at a certain point, yes, you're going to follow with your I statement. I want this completed by noon on Thursday, or I want you to reply by the end of the day. An I want statement, yes. But I hope you hear what I am not saying. I'm not saying what I hear all the time. I need this by Thursday, or I need this by the end of the day. Why is this important? Because I think words matter. When I hear you say to me that you need me to do something, you know what I think in my head? I think, no, you don't. You don't need me to do that. That is not accurate. Just say what you mean. It's something you want, and I'm okay with that. Say that. You know what the great thing is about curiosity? 
Curiosity is the barrier against the mindset that says, you have to do what I say. And here's the trouble with the mindset of you have to do what I say. When I think you have to do something just because I told you to, and then if you don't do it, well, I'm going to take that personally. And now things are not going to go well. Instead, imagine if you are my boss and I don't do something. If you come to me and you are just curious, if you don't know what my action means, well, then you can look at it just like a move on a chessboard that you're watching from a balcony. And yeah, you're one of the players, but watching from a distance allows you to see so many more choices. Distance gives you all the authority you can imagine. That is a mindset that's empowering. And that is a mindset that is a motif throughout my coaching tips. If this mindset intrigues you at all, four other episodes you might listen to are The Look and Sound of Self-Esteem, Speaking for Yourself, Showing Teeth, and Status. When I was thinking about what other episodes you might listen to, I thought of a bunch more. If you look at this episode on the website, you'll see a lot more links. The website is EssentialCom.com. It's EssentialCom with two M's, dot com. When you're on the site, in the archive, search for tips in the categories called assertiveness or executive presence or self-talk. Those are just some of the categories where I thought this episode belonged, and you will find lots of related tips in those categories. And please, feel free to download the PDFs and share them with your team or your colleagues. It's up to you if you want to share them with your boss. But help yourself. This month, someone with the iTunes username BND Davis posted this in a review in the iTunes store. Quote, I've learned so much from listening to the podcast. Some episodes have confirmed for me that I'm doing things right, while others have challenged me. It's amazing the difference a few minutes can make. Close quote. Well, BND Davis, I'm so glad the podcast is making a difference for you, and I'm grateful that you let me know. I can't say enough how important those reviews are. To those of you who make the effort to post a review, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Those of you who haven't done it yet, I hope you will. If you have ideas for an episode, let me know. Just hit the contact button on the website. That comes straight to me. I really look forward to hearing from you. Until next time. I'm Tom Henschel. Thanks so much for listening.